evening everyone on behalf of the bombay bar association dr saraf the secretary of the association and our members who are here it's a pleasure to invite mrs ruchi parekh who is a coach uh, practicing in singapore to speak to us about work life harmony ruchi has been a member of our bar she was practicing she she passed out of glc in the year 2005 or 2006 i think 2006 and uh, she has been practicing in our courts she was working with different firms at different points of time uh, with uh, mr ashwin ankar with almt uh, and a few others thereafter she moved to hong kong and she was working as a lawyer over there and now she's in singapore uh and she has done her coaching uh, her training in um, in coaching uh when when as the association and dr saraf and all of us thought that they were that one of the fundamental problems we had as lawyers which we face is we don't know where to stop when to start working and when to stop working so we thought that somebody who's professionally trained to speak to us about how to balance things it may uh, help us in planning ourselves better so may i invite mrs parekh to uh, speak to our members and uh, address us on the topics which she is deciding uh, can i use one mic i think we are echoing is one mic enough this is we are echoing thank you ankit um uh, my name is ruchi parekh and i am a life coach I live in Singapore and I was part of this amazing fraternity about 8 years ago. In 2010 I left Bombay and moved to Hong Kong where I practiced uh, law again. You must be wondering how I can um, you know speak on this on work life harmony. The reason I chose this topic with Ankit was because I've been through this chaos. I've been through this um craziness of what we face of what you guys face here now and i thought it would be a good idea to give you an outsider's view of how to manage your life despite this craziness because it can't be changed this is what our profession and not mine anymore but this is what the profession is all about to to, to start with if you're looking for work life balance then you're in for a rude shock because there's no such thing as work life balance it's not possible to attain work life balance the problem is that the idea of work life balance suggests that life is a um, equally a, a perfectly divisible pie that you can split into ways that you like but life simply isn't like that instead work and life are layers on top of each other with rotating levels of importance and instead of going crazy trying to force art we should enjoy and celebrate this overlap there are times we do a lot of things to you know make our lives efficient to plan to meticulously plan our days but what we don't take into account are the interferences and the disturbances i'll tell you more about it later but a very perfectly planned day with things planned from morning to evening can be completely thrown off balance because life happens and it's going to keep happening so instead of choosing one over the other rather you know make it a harmony that's why i call it work life harmony knowing fully well that this harmony will vary over time sometimes on a daily basis your work life harmony will be different today will be different when you're single when you're married when you're working when you're not when you have kids it's going to keep changing so embrace it enjoy it why are we living we all want to have a happy fulfilled content life so do everything to make that happen ensure that your work and your personal life runs smoothly in such a way that there's a harmony and and a, a marriage between them I'm going to tell you I'll give you a few tips to how to achieve it because 
even if it's not possible to do it overnight but these are baby steps there are few baby steps that you need to take and that's what i want to teach you because at the end of the day life is too short to waste even a single day being anything but happy so why waste that time why not take that little tweak our lives a little bit to make those changes a few changes and ensure that things go as per plan for us to begin with first point stop aiming for perfection it's never going to happen there is no such thing as perfection my perfection or my perfect life will be different for yours so don't look for the perfect life that everyone assumes that they are having or portrays they are having be realistic learn to let go you don't have to do everything everything is not and cannot be done by you so let go aim for what works for you and that will help i also want to say if while i'm talking if you have anything you agree or don't agree any questions feel free to stop me i would love to answer any of your questions if you have any secondly focus on your strengths it's not possible for any human being to be good at everything you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses and accept them get aware of them and focus on them delegate stuff that you're not good at why try and do things that will take you 10 times longer when someone else who's good at it can do it sooner so focus on your strengths and leave the rest to be outsourced third one focus on your health we forget how important we are how important our health is a healthy body is a healthy mind very often we get into this mode of i need to exercise i need to do this but i don't have the time i'm just so busy working i'm just so busy i have a matter i have to meet my i have to prepare the brief at 7 in the morning but if you rather worked a little efficiently i'm not saying you're inefficient but when you're feeling healthy you become you tend to become efficient make exercise a ritual you'll be surprised by its benefits you'll be amazed by how how better you can get so make sure like you brush your teeth you have a take a shower make exercise a part of your of your daily rituals even if it's for 30 minutes i'm sure everyone has 30 minutes a day they can manage even if it's just walking in your compound it's manageable fourthly prioritize your time we love making to do lists i do love making to do lists but sometimes these to do lists have 100 points on them 100 things to do and that itself is so overwhelming that that to do list never gets over you need to prioritize the important stuff on that to do list because you definitely don't have that much time and it's never going to be enough so you need to know how to or learn to prioritize the important stuff everything is not important fifth no fourth, fourth thing my favorite actually self care does anyone know what self care is what is self care anyone have any idea by definition self care is something any activity you deliberately do in order to take care of your emotional mental and physical well-being and we don't realize the value and the importance of it there's a saying that goes you cannot pour from an empty cup and it's true if you're not taking care of yourself how are you going to take care of your work how are you going to take care of your life of your family of your of, of anything even in the, every aircraft that you go on they say put in case of emergency put your own oxygen mask first before helping anyone even if it's your own child so you need to take care of yourself works very important it's giving you your bread and butter but what's the use of all that money you're making if your health is not good if you're not feeling good if you're not enjoying that money that you're making so take care of yourself 
do things that you enjoy take time out it's there's a lot of stuff that you can that you may have pushed under the carpet that you may have forgotten when was the last time you did something you really enjoyed which was not done because someone told you but because you felt like doing it give it some thought and include it in your life self care is very important another of my favorites learn to say no without explaining yourself it's a favorite for lawyers we'll have urgent mentioning we'll have an urgent appeal an urgent matter and even though your day is jam packed a friend will say please do it for me you know i have to run for some client and you say okay and that's the interference i was talking about your absolutely well meticulously planned day will be thrown off guard because you're doing something for someone else because you couldn't say no because you couldn't offend them but learn that it's okay to put yourself first sometimes it's okay to say no if you're going nuts it's okay to say no without giving 10000 reasons why you're saying no you could just be busy you could just be having so much on your plate that you can't manage it we are all slaves of diplomacy but it's okay once in a while if we don't it's okay to say no without explaining yourself to isn't isn't that something most of us face most of us suffer from it i used to find it very hard and there are times even now but it's a conscious effort don't have to say yes for everything that's where all the chaos starts to come in because you're trying to help everyone by neglecting yourself and all the things that are going on in your life that are also important unplug sometimes every piece of technology that we have has an off button we've forgotten about it i don't think our phones ever go off i don't think so and it's not possible i'm not telling you to shut your phone i'm telling you to take baby steps maybe you can leave your phone aside when you're having a meal maybe you can have family time with no devices these are baby steps what happens is we are constantly we human beings forget the devices we are constantly on an on mode we don't switch off the mind doesn't rest it's constantly working the worst thing is on a weekend when you decide that you're exhausted because you are going to get burnt out if you're not managing to marry your work with your life and you say okay i haven't finished but what i'll do is i'll take my work home for, and i'll do it on the weekend knowing fully well that you have a jam packed social a socially filled up weekend but you say okay maybe i'll wake up on early on sunday morning at 7 work for 2 hours and then 9 onwards i'll be free but you end up sleeping at 3 am on saturday night and that work is sitting on that desk or table in your room staring at you you know what's happening subconsciously you're stressing yourself out subconsciously it's just there constantly looking at you when are you going to do it when are you going to reach me and i'll tell you something about our subconscious mind it loves us it loves to work extra hard for us so when your subconscious mind knows that something's on your mind constantly you're giving it so much importance it must be important for you it will work overtime and give you more of that so don't don't let your subconscious believe that this stress is something that you love make it believe that you hate it don't think about it and that will happen if you don't take that work home because you're not going to be able to work on the weekend and it's not even fair to you it's not fair to you it's not fair to your family maybe you don't even end up doing it on the weekend and you do it on the monday morning tell yourself consciously that this is my time this is my free time because otherwise you will never be able to switch off and you will really get burnt out that is another thing that you don't want to deal with burnout which happens in today's day and age at ages such as as early as 
40s you don't want to reach there you want to live a long happy healthy life you don't want to get burnt out depressed crushing yourself your mind not being able to function because you didn't take any time out you were so busy working in your heydays in the best years of your life that you didn't have time make time now before it's too late unplug and finally the last point take regular breaks take regular breaks i'm not saying once a year you decide to take or every court vacation i'm going to go out what about weekends what about an hour a week just doing nothing just being yourself are just cutting off from anything that's surrounding your work you won't believe how recharged refreshed you feel when you come back it's something that's worth trying it's something that is important for you to manage yourself and your life better so let me reiterate the eight points that i told you stop aiming for perfection focus on your strengths focus on your health prioritize your time self care ensuring me time so important learning to say no unplugging unplugging you must and finally taking short breaks regular when i say breaks i don't mean a holiday i mean even in a day ensuring you have some break where you do nothing where you just with yourself by yourself away from any form of interference or disturbance it could even entail a chat with a friend something that refreshes you it's so important that brings me to the end of the tips on work life balance sorry work life how many if you have any questions on it before i proceed i'd love to answer anyone none let me tell you a bit more about me i'm sure you're wondering what a life coach is or what life coaching is all about does anyone know you do are you wondering what life coaching is a lot of people wonder it's a very it's a career that's as young as 15 years but the concept has existed since time immemorial i'll explain further if you have a problem what's the first thing that you do not a trick question it's a very simple question what's the first thing you do when you have a problem it does not necessarily have to be a emotional problem something as silly as why am i not getting a job what's coming in the way what is the first thing you do when you have a problem nobody has any problems in this room i'm so impressed <laughs> sorry you crib about you talk about it who do you talk to you talk to some your friends your family someone you're close to someone you trust if your problem gets resolved that's perfect but if not then what then what do you do exactly keep thinking keep thinking driving yourself nuts till you find that solution and believe it or not even in today's day and age going to a counselor or a therapist is considered taboo you rather drive yourself nuts if you're having an emotional problem but you will not go to that counselor or therapist until and unless you're extremely desperate that's where i come in i'm not your friend or family well i am for a few here but normally i'm not your friend or family and i'm not your counselor or therapist i am your guide a mentor i hold your hand when you feel lost i give you a bit of a nudge when you're stuck we all have coping mechanisms that have got us this far we've all managed our lives very well sometimes we face certain problems that the coping mechanisms we used don't work anymore they just it's just a situation or a scenario that you've never faced and you feel stuck that's when i come in i show you your problem with a 360 degree view because the coping mechanism that you knew and you kept attacking your problem with it's not working so coaching shows you where to attack it from what's the different entrance you should take and hit that problem with 
A coaching session is very simple. I'm trained to only ask questions. I don't give you any advice. I will not tell you what to do. I will not tell you if you should do something or not do something. But the questions that I ask you will let you get the answers that will help you solve your problem and find that solution. You know what that does? It empowers you. It makes you believe that it is you who can do everything. It equips you with the tools to face similar situations in the future. That's what coaching is. And that's how it helps and how it works. So you don't feel dependent. You don't feel that things are out of control. It gives the control back into you. And that's the fun part of it. If that would bring me to the end of my, event, my conversation with you, I'm very thankful to Ankit and uh, Dr. Saraf for having me here today. It's been a complete pleasure. And it really got me nostalgic coming here after eight years. 2010, November was the last. I was in this gorgeous building and uh, coming back has really got my hair on edge. Thank you for listening to me. It's been a pleasure. May I request Dr. Saraf to uh, speak a few words to our members and also to thank Ruchi. Today's workshop is a part of our endeavor not just to focus on legal subjects, but to have an interaction on diverse subjects which really affect people from our profession. And we had an earlier workshop where a person who was a health advisor, a dietitian or a nutritionist came and exchanged notes. And today, that was about the body and today a bit about the mind. So this, and it was an ex extremely interesting talk which we had today and thank you. We, these are occasions, not that it leaves you with a solution immediately, but I guess these are occasions which leave you with a thought. And that is what our endeavor is. That when we have a workshop like this, at least in the entire crazy life that we lead, we take out this moment to think. And once we think, and we have some thoughts which somebody has thrown to us, I'm sure we can find many answers. And one of the things which I found very relevant was when she said that there is no balance. There is really no balance which you can have as such. And each person has to have his own balance. And that's something which I really realized maybe much later than I should have. We all start into a profession with a lot of dreams with a lot of ambitions and we start running the race we ra we all run fast and we try to match everyone around us we want to be the first person there and very often we compete with others which is good and healthy but we most often want to do what the other person is doing not realizing that that person is different his motivations are different his needs are different. What excites him are different. And when we run that race without realizing that, that's where we get into lows, we get into depression. And because we cannot be that person, and yet we are trying to compete to be the way he is. And that is where it is extremely essential, as she said, to focus on our strengths, our needs. What is your own personality, you'll, you'll find some very successful lawyers with, you know, the world-renowned lawyers. They might be having a very troubled family because they may not be having any time for them and it might not be mentally disturbing them so much. But would you be able to do that? And would you be able to make that compromise? Maybe not. And if you cannot make that compromise, then how do you want to lead a life like his? Maybe if you focus more on your family and got a little more happiness in the time which you had available, you'll perform much better. So that's a real harsh fact, which I myself, and I must tell you this, that, and I've read this, I'll avoid naming it, that one of the top legal luminaries in India didn't have kids 
because he thought it will come in the way of his practice, in the way of his professional excellence. But that is what drove him. Will, will you be able to do that? Maybe not. So that's where, in a sense, which I found extremely relevant today was two points. One was that you need to strike your own balance. You need to know yourself, your need, your body, and then strike the balance. And you need to focus on your strengths. You have left us with a lot of thoughts. Thank you so much. And I'm sure our members will carry this ahead and do a little bit of reading on their own and make this a part of their daily life. Thank you and uh, thank you for being here. And uh, may I request since Ankit is here and uh, Ankit has taken the initiative for all these workshops, I request Ankit to present a small token of attitude to the guest of the day. Thank you very much and all of you have a good evening. Ruchi uh, has a Facebook page which is by the name Ruch Parikh and she's also on Instagram at Coach Ruch. Uh, her contact details are also here. She has a small uh, brochure. Uh, what I have seen is that she keeps updating about certain different topics uh, of interest including things like how to manage stress, how to manage depression, how to manage work. And uh, I've, I've read some of those and I found them really interesting. So uh, uh, I request all of you to collect uh, these pamphlets and have the uh, contact details. And whenever you uh, feel appropriate, you can go to the website, uh, to the Facebook page or the Instagram page and then uh, contact her. Her contact details are also on this. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>